Does Valve pay Kitty? Why did Valve choose Kitty? I went to Barcelona to find out. I'm currently at Academy, which is the largest Kitty conference. All of the Kitty developers who could attend are here. Super exciting. One in particular, David Edmondson, has held a talk about the Steam Deck, actually using a Steam Deck to do the presentation, which is super exciting by itself. Now, in the presentation, he talked about many things, but what I think is most interesting, the relationship between Kitty and Valve, and how how actually Valve contributed to KDE and to what extent. Let me start off by saying that technically Valve did not pay KDE as far as I know, but they did contract Blue System. Blue System is a company that is very close to KDE and that actually employs many developers that work uh, full time at this point at KDE. So they did that. Now, Blue System was contracted to implement a variety of stuff. I'm going to go through them. Let me see if I can bring up the slides here. First of all, we have a lot of things regarding system settings, like the ability to highlight the settings that have been changed, making sure that the revert to default button actually works throughout system settings, and actually the implementation of the firewall KCM, that is the system setting page for firewall. They also ask for better network resource monitoring and also a new backend for system monitor for GPUs and better system monitors that you can actually have as widgets on the desktop. The landing page of the system settings is also asked by Valve to Blue Systems. And then we have a variety of power profile stuff. So switching, managing the app resources via C groups, the foreground app boosting. There has been a Gwen view overall and speed improvements. Spectacle, streamlining, so making sure that it works nicely and console reflow, the ability to actually, um, you know, reflow it the text when you change the size of console that came from this project too. They also help with startup performance improvements, a more robust system D managed boot, microphone volume indicators and some of key I O Fuse. And of course the Steam Deck only uses flat packs for apps to actually be installed because the root system is immutable. So improvements have been done there as well, uh, such as partial support for drag and dropping outside of the file system, the KDE API for process spawning outside the sandbox, portal things, this kind of stuff. Also Wayland, uh, the Steam Deck currently does not use Wayland, it uses X11 still, but they do want eventually, they know that Wayland is the next thing. So there has been work on Wayland as well. Now Wayland is a bit of a more big topic that goes beyond KDE, so it wasn't, um, David didn't went go to into details about this. What does this tell us about Valve and their involvement with KDE? All of this, these things actually go beyond the scope of the Steam Deck, which means that Steam Valve actually cares about the environment that cre they are creating around the Steam Deck, so SteamOS. And they also said that they were surprised by the popularity of the desktop mode. They did not expect people to like it so much. So that is something that KDE can pride themselves in actually making a good product that Steve, Steam Deck user owners actually wanted to use. David also talked about why did Valve chose KDE? <laughs> and his answer is that, well, because they use KDE and they like it and they're making a product that is targeted to somebody that is similar in interest, if I understood this correctly, to the Valve developers themselves. This was for the Steam Deck. What else, did, <laughs> what has, what else has happened to Barcelona at Academy? There were actually some significant announcements. We have had the goals, we have conquering the world by Nate. I'm going to go through this talk so that just by watching this video you're updated on everything. However, I do want to say something first. And that is thanks to the sponsors of this video, which is Internext. They offer secure cloud storage and secure because they have end-to-end -end encryption, modern zero knowledge protocols, and they are transparent. That is all of their code is open source on GitHub and you can actually check it out for yourselves. That way all of your files and photos are always 100% secure and private and you know what's going on and you are in control of it. Now, why should you use cloud storage at all anyway? Well, it's the best way to make sure that all of your files and photos are in the same place and you can access them regardless of your devices and they are in sync between your devices. 
It's also safer, that is, if you only have your files on your personal device, it could at any time be stolen, you could lose it, or the hard drive or the hard disk could be damaged and all of that data would be lost. So if you're looking for something that's ethical, safe and secure and open source, Internext offers Drive, Photos and Send. Drive and Photos to actually, you know, upload your files and photos to make sure that they are in sync and send to send files up to 5 gigabytes to other people. Of course, still securely and privately. Now, of course, if you're watching this video, you're probably on Linux and of course, Internex is fully committed to making sure that their products work on Linux out of the box. They are fully committed to support FOSS. You can download their app as a dev file for Debian or Ubuntu or you can download it from the hour in Arc Linux or Arch Linux or even as an app image. So if you're interested they actually give up to 10 gigabytes to everyone starting from 2 and then reaching to them with the various tasks that you, you can accomplish and if that's not enough storage for you you can actually use code NICO25 as in Nikolov's Linux NICO25 to get 25% off any internext annual plan. So open source, private, try out internext. Okay, I'm actually losing the sun. I'm in Barcelona, so I don't actually have my room with a green screen and everything. So this is the only setup I can set up. So let's go through what I promised. First, there's the talk by Nate, which is called Conquering the World. This is the second talk that he gives about this. It's an update. Last time he talked about how to reach that goal and now he talks about whether we reached it. He talks about the fact that a KDE is now out of the box on many devices. He talks about Pine64 but also Slimbook, KFocus. I've done a video on KFocus. I will do one video about Slimbook and also Tuxedo actually switched to Plasma for all of their computers out of the box with Tuxedo OS which is great. And Plasma is also out of the box on a variety of devices that are not just Linux desktops or laptops, but are d completely different form factors, which is what's so exciting. We're talking as an example about the Steam Deck, obviously, <laughs> but also the PinePhone and the PinePhone Pro. And we have also got the Mic Mycroft AI Mark II, which is something like Google Home, but open source that actually runs Plasma under the hood and uses Kurigami for the interface, so it is very much a KD product. And there's also the Plasma device, very new, which is the Minis Forum Elite Mini, Elite Mini, I don't know how that's that pronounced, from Manjaro. So there's a lot of devices that even go beyond the traditional traditional form factors that actually use Plasma out of the box, and that is awesome. There are, however, some challenges, obviously. He talks about how the Plasma LTS, that is the long-term support version, is not as good as it could be, and right now it should be either improved or dismissed entirely, depending on, you know, what's our goal. And the reasons for the long-term support to be dismissed this way is because it's not that used by devs themselves and when developers don't use something, it's hard to notice that it has some bugs or some things that could improve. And also there's not enough backporting, backporting of bug fixes from the latest versions to the LTS one. Finally, there's no LTS frameworks or applications, which means that those have to be freezed at a certain version that aligns with the Plasma LTS version. And that means no bug fixes whatsoever backported to frameworks and apps, which is an issue. Then there's also a lot of reinventing the distro wheel. So SteamOS, OpenVoiceOS, TuxedoOS, Kubuntu, Manjaro, KD Neon, all of these distros are built on Plasma, they use it, they customize it a bit, they're all different in packaging and that of course is a lot of packaging work that has to be done every time you need to bring something to each of uh, these distros. So there's talks of maybe doing a reference KD distro to um, unify a bit them, that was one of the proposed solutions. And there's also um, a discussion of bug fixing, bug fixing sorry, responsibility. So one um, solution that was proposed that I really like is having a KD channel where you can go and actually pay for targeted developer work. So a company like um, KFocus, as an example, or Slimbook could go to this channel, say, okay, one of my machines that runs Plasma has this bug. I need it to be fixed very urgently and actually pays for this dev work which is prioritary for them. 
he hands the talk talking about how uh, you should please use the long-term support versions to actually check out whether they work or not, which is, okay, fair enough, important. And that was actually it. Like, <laughs> that was the last slide. Then there's what has happened in Plasma Mobile in 2022, another very exciting talk. All of this is from Saturday. And there's actually a lot that has happened. There's a new home screen, uh, very recent. Uh, or recently, also, there's support for gestures when uh, sliding from the bottom. Um, and one cool thing is that there's a lot of focus on convergency, meaning that the panels that are on the phone at the top and at the bottom under the hood are the same exact panels that are on Plasma Desktop. And applications as well, there's a variety of applications, Discover, Lisa, Coco, Casts, NeoChat, that are actually convergent. And my camera is actually suffering to make... <laughs> there's not an enough light anymore. Let's finish this. All of these applications are convergent. They work on your phone, they work on your laptop uh, with the same exact code base, which is awesome. There's also, of course, a variety of apps that are meant to be used on phones, such as Anglefish, which is the browser, QML console, which is console, but for the phone and built in QML, and Index, which is the file manager by, by Maui. All of these apps applications are released in three different cycles, which is Pl Plasma Mobile Gear for the fastest ones, because su stuff like the dialer is bug fixed a lot, so it needs a lot of updates. Then there's the Kiddy Gear, which is slightly slower, and of course Maui for Maui apps has its own release schedule. Finally, Kurgami has been proved. Now there's new components like navigation tab bar, uh, dialogues, form components, and the challenges that we should um, face in the future are the fact that vendors lock in their phones a lot so you can't really try to change the operating system but there's uh, projects like post market twice that supports devices such as oneplus 6 to make it as an, ex an example there's also a big fragmentation of open mobile communities the plan for the future of plasma mobile is better stability and performance KDE PIM, that is the personal information manager, calendars, emails, get that to Plasma Mobile, tablet support and convergence, that is supporting multiple displays and multi-window mode. They ended the talk saying that Plasma Mobile currently needs more um, contributors. So if you're interested in the project, what are you waiting for? Finally, I'll probably do a bit about that in Trali because it's just so important. We have new goals and the goals are KDE for all, um, Accessibility by Carl Schwann, Automatize Everything by Nate Graham, and Sustainable Software by, if I understood this correctly, Cornelius. Uh, what are they about? Well, accessibility explains uh, itself, I think. Automatize, there are a couple of examples that were done. As an example, GitLab as a CI that could be improved. You could make sure that in order to merge a merge request, uh, you have to um, make sure that all the tests pass. That is something that could be done and also sustainable, sorry, and also uh, having the documentation directly in the repository with the code would actually allow, this is a very specific example, to ask merge request, please change the documentation as well as the code in the same merge request so that I can actually accept this, which is very nice. Sustainable software instead talks about an environment and the sustainability uh, from an environmental point of view of KDE software, making sure that it doesn't use more resources that need it. So this is uh, Saturday of KDE Academy. There is still Sunday. Today is Sunday. I'm recording this. Um, what can I say? The KDE Academy is so exciting. I've also done a podcast talking about the goals, but uh, you know it's actually shorter than this video. This video is more in depth. So you're up to date, don't worry. And hopefully see you tomorrow with another video. I hope this was useful. Hi from Barcelona.